Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the overview of the Veterinary Services Grant Program referred to here on as VSGP. I am Bob Smith, a veterinarian and the National Program Leader for Animal Health and Veterinary Medicine at NIFA and one of the program leaders for the Veterinary Services Grant Program. Today's presentation will also include Dr. Michelle Colby, a veterinarian and a National Program Leader at NIFA. This webinar is designed to give you an overview of the VSGP. We will cover following items, a general overview of VSGP, a detailed description of both the Rural Practice Enhancement Grants and the Education, Extension and Training Grants, and what resources are available to you. The VSGP is authorized by the two 2014 Farm Bill to make competitive grants available to qualified entities or individuals that carry out educational programs or services for the purpose of developing, implementing, and sustaining food and large animal veterinary services and relieving veterinarian shortage situations in the United States. Also, funding is allocated each year for awards in two program areas education extension and training, as we will refer to as EET, and rural practice enhancement, as we will refer to as RPE. The RPE grant is for establishing or expanding veterinary practices by equipping clinical offices and providing equipment necessary to provide essential services for a designated area. Approximately one third of the available funds for VSGP are allocated for the RPE projects with award amounts ranging between a minimum of $75,000 and a maximum of $125,000. Eligible applicants include clinics or entities, both nonprofit or profit, located in the United States that provide services to food and large animals in a rural area, which has been designated as a veterinarian shorted situation by a state's veterinarian or state's animal health official, also referred to as the South. Those shortage areas for the current year are posted on USDA NIFA's shortage situation map. Applicants for an RPE grant must apply to only one shortage area in which they will provide services. The applicant does not need to be a veterinarian providing the service, but someone responsible and authorized to make a commitment on behalf of the clinic to provide services to an area. Funds awarded under this program area are for equipping veterinary offices, sharing in reasonable overhead expenses, and or to establish mobile veterinary facilities. Note, any one of these categories or combination of the three can be applied for. The only exception is overhead costs, which cannot exceed 50% of the requested funds. Examples of equipment include chutes, ultrasound machines, head gates, and hoof trimming. When requesting funds to equip veterinary offices, the applicant must explain how the requested equipment will be used to provide veterinary care for agricultural animals in rural veterinarian shortage situations. Overhead expenses such as salary and fringe benefits for veterinarians and support personnel, office rent, vehicle fuel supporting ambulatory services, maintenance contracts on equipment used to treat food animals, expendable, expendable medical and office supplies, computer software or hardware, and utility expenses. When requesting funds for overhead, the applicant must explain how the overhead funds requested will allow the app applicant to extend or establish veterinary services in a designated shortage situation. As noted previously, expenses in this category cannot exceed 50% of requested funds. Mobile veterinary clinic expenses may include purchase of a vehicle, veterinary truck inserts, point of care testing equipment, and animal restraints. Applicants requesting funds to establish a mobile practice must not only explain how the mobile facilities will enable them to establish or expand services in a designated shortage situation, but also how they plan to use the facilities to address education or extension needs in the shortage situation area. This can be through experiential learning opportunities for veterinary or veterinary technician students, 
interns, externs, or high school students in grades 11 and 12. Courses, seminars, lectures, or other events for producer groups, the public, community organization, or academic institutions, or participation in emergency preparedness events. It is important to note that all RPE awards require a three-year commitment of veterinary service in the designated veterinary shortage situation one applies for. So what is a designated shortage situation? Veterinarian shortage situations are designated under the Veterinary Medicine Loan Repayment Program, or VMLRP. These can be found via a link to the VMLRP map on the VSGP webpage or by going directly to www.nifa.usda.gov backslash VMLRP hyphen map. This link is also located at the bottom on this slide. The process of shortage situation designation occurred over, la over the last several months following a well-defined non-competitive merit-based pro process aimed at fairly distributing the opportunity to participate in the VMLRP and VSGPRP grant. Nominations were submitted by state animal health officials or SAHOs from across the country, including insular areas. A panel of veterinary experts reviewed the submitted nominations to ensure they met program criteria and eventually recommended all of them to be designated as shortage situations. Those interested in applying for RPE grants will use this map to identify the shortage situation areas they intend to fill and to find the details of the veterinary needs of these areas. Those applying for EET grants may want to review the shortage situations in their state to better understand the specific needs of food animal medicine in their area. To access this map, go to the Veterinary Shortage Situations section of the VSGP website. From there, click on the Veterinary Shortage Situations map. This link takes you to a page with the current fiscal year map. All of states or blocks shaded blue have a designated shortage areas for that fiscal year. States or blocks in white do not have a designated veterinary shortage situation. This does not necessarily mean that there does not exist a shortage situation within that state, but that no shortage situation nominations were submitted by the state animal health official. You can access the shortage situations for a state in one of two ways, either by clicking on the blue shaded area of the map or by using the fil filter located below the map, entering the state to filter by and selecting apply. No matter which technique technique you use, the map will not change, but the table below will list the shortage areas that map your search, match your search criteria. When you click on a state, a list of shortage IDs will be displayed in a table below the map. This image is an example of what is displayed after clicking on the state of Illinois. Moving from left to right, you will see the shortage ID, state territory, county, shortage type, VMLRP status, VSGP status, fiscal year, and lastly, nomination form. This table offers easy viewing for quick information. The type of shortage area is important to note for RPE applicants. All type two areas are in rural areas and are eligible shortage areas under VSGP. Type one areas may or may not be in a rural area. As such, additional steps are needed to determine if the area is eligible. We will review those steps shortly. Type three areas are public practice and do not fall under eligible applicant category for VSGP. Next, I would like you to, to direct your attention to the right side of the table. Here you will see a link to a PDF under nomination form. When you click on the PDF, you will see the nomination form that was submitted to NIFA by the state animal health official. This is an image of what the PDF will look like when you open it. You can use this form to gain a better understanding of the specified shortage situation you plan to apply for. The second page of the nomination form contains answers to four questions. The first question addresses the importance and objectives of a veterinarian filling the shortage. The next question addresses the activities and services the veterinarian filling the shortage should provide. The third question addresses past recruitment issues. And the last question addresses the risk to public health and or the food supply if the shortage is not filled. There are three types of veterinary shortage areas. RPE applicants are eligible to apply for any type one nomination located in a rural area. Not all type one nominations are in rural areas, although many are. 
An additional map is required as part of the application material for type one veterinary shortage situation areas. This map must display that the type one veterinary shortage situation is eligible as rural on the USDA property eligibility map. More details on this topic are covered under the RPE application process webinar. Type two nominations are eligible for RPE applicants and all type two nominations are in rural areas. Type three nominations are designated for public practice and are not available for RPE applicants. Regardless of the percent FTE or full-time equivalent specified on the shortage nomination form, all VSGP applicants must dedicate a minimum of 67% FTE to food and large animal services. This equates to about 27 hours for a 40 hour work week. It is possible that more than one application could be submitted for a specific shortage area. That means that the multiple applications for one shortage area could be in competition with each other. Please keep in mind that only one award will be offered per shortage area and only one award will be offered per applicant. As a reminder, all recipients of VSGP awards must provide three years of service in the shortage area in which the award was granted. Moving on, we will now review the second programs area of today's webinar the Education, Extension, and Training, or EET grants. Approximately two thirds of the available funds will be allocated for EET project awards with individual awards amounts ranging from a minimum of 75,000 to a maximum of $250,000. The funding amount includes up to 30% for indirect costs. Eligible applicants for the EET program area include US veterinary colleges or schools that are accredited by the AVMA's Council on Education, AVMA accredited veterinary technician schools or programs, a state, national, or allied food animal veterinary professional organization such as the American Association of Bovine Practitioners recognized by the AVMA. And departments of veterinary sciences associated with state agriculture experiment stations affiliated with 1862 land grant institutions or research farms affiliated with 1890 land grant institutions. Please note that the applications proposing coordination with other qualified entities could receive funding preference. Funds awarded under this program area will support activities and programs to relieve veterinary shortage situations for any of the following four purposes. First, to cover the expenses for attending training programs in food safety and food animal medicine. Expenses can be covered for veterinary students, interns, externs, fellows, residents, and veterinary technician students. Second, to establish or expand accredited veterinarian, veterinary education programs, including faculty recruitment and retention, veterinary residency and fellowship programs, or veterinary internship and externship programs carried out in coordination with, an, with accredited colleges of veterinary medicine. Third, to provide continuing education and extension needed to strengthen veterinary programs and enhance food safety. This includes veterinary telemedicine and other distance-based education and must be for veterinarians, veterinary technicians, and or other health professionals. And lastly, to expose students in grades 11 and 12 to education and career opportunities in food animal medicine. Examples of the types of activities that would be appropriate for this program area include the development and implementation of traditional or non-traditional learning opportunities, non-degree educational training programs, courses or course series 
associated with existing degree programs and continuing education. Keep in mind that these types of activities can include opportunities for high school students. Please note, applications proposing to develop new degree programs will not be funded. Funding priority will be placed on courses that are des designed for one, veterinary students in the last two years of their veterinary degree program, or veterinary interns, externs, fellows, and residents, veterinary technicians, and students. Two, early career vet veterinarians who are at the time they begin participation in the, the activities proposed in the application are within five years of graduation from a doctorate of veterinary medicine degree program. And third, 11th and 12th grade high school students. Activities should not include research or graduate programs. The content being taught should emphasize one or more of the following veterinary practice enhancement techniques and strategies that benefit the health of agricultural animals, best practices for delivering quality veterinary services in rural areas, and or veterinary approaches to foster food safety, epidemiology, or public health. It is not required for EET applicants to specify specific veterinary shortage areas for the state they are located. However, being aware of the current shortage areas of the SAHO that the SAHO has nominated may prove beneficial to their application. The specific needs of those shortage areas can provide valuable guidance to the training that may be needed in training the students who could potentially serve the needs of the producers and animals in those areas and thus strengthen their proposal. We want to remind you that there are a variety of resources available for your guidance on the VSGP webpage as you put your application together. First, the RFA will be your best resource for instructions and details to include in your application. Read it thoroughly. Second, the recorded applications webinar like this one provides information on the application process for RPE and EET applicants. Third, our annual and historical reports include information about previous funded projects. Fourth, our fact sheet provide an overview of the program. And fifth, there is an example map for RPE applicants on the VSGP Web page, and we recommend that you take a good look at it. Lastly, our VSGP team is a resource for you. We truly enjoy connecting with applicants and welcome the opportunity to answer your questions, meet with you virtually, or speak with you over the phone. We are available upon request. Please feel free to reach out via email at vsgp at usda.gov or use the contact information located in the RFA. Thank you.